How's it going everyone? My name is Jermaine Grant. Today I'm going to show you how to 3D motion track 3D text into your scene using After Effects and Element 3D. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is 3D track or motion track our scene so we can put the 3D text into it. So I'm going to select my clip. I'm going to come over to Tracker. And if the tracker isn't here, come over to window and scroll down to tracker and make sure the track is clicked and highlighted. When it is clicked and highlighted, come over to tracker, select your clip and select track camera. What I suggest you do just to be safe is click on advanced and select detailed analysis under 3D camera tracker. After Effects will now proceed to 3D track the scene. So I'm just going to speed this up a bit. Once that's done, you'll see these 3D tracking marks in my scene as I scroll through my footage. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to set a ground plane and I'm going to set a couple nulls. So as you can see, as I move my mouse around these tracking points, this red round circle pops up. This basically shows us where our solids or objects will be when we put them into the scene. So I'm just going to click on my mouse because I'm happy with how the plane is orientated. Then I'm going to right click and scroll down to create solid and camera. So I'm going to select that. And as you can see, a solid pops up. I'm not quite happy with the orientation. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over to the effects and presets. I'm going to type in grid, making sure my clip is highlighted. I'm going to double click grid. So if my solid is selected, I'm just going to change the orientation of my solid by clicking on the 3D cursor and just changing the rotation of the Z, X and Y axis and matching it up with the ground plane of my scene. So the lines match up with the road on the right, as you can see. Yeah, that's absolutely perfect with me. You don't have to do that. I'm just doing this so I can visually see if I've got a good track or not. And as I scroll through, that track looks a bit solid. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple nulls. So I'm going to click on my clip then I'm going to click on 3D camera tracker so that the track to render points show up again. Then I'm going to select a plane. I'm going to click. Then I'm going to right click and select create null. And I have a track null up here and I'm just going to create another null as well. Yeah, click, right click, create null. I'm going to name my second null track null 2. Now that that's done, we have our nulls here placed about our scene and our solid. I'm going to hide the solid. I'm going to select this layer. I'm going to duplicate this layer. So I'm going to select it, come over to edit and select duplicate. Once that's done, I'm going to select my duplicated layer. I'm going to delete the camera tracker from that layer. I'm going to right click my duplicated layer. I'm going to go over to time and I'm going to freeze frame this layer. I'm going to rename the layer I just freeze framed and I'm going to call it environment. You can call this layer whatever name you want. It's just for reference. I'm going to hide the layer by clicking this I button so that we don't see it anymore. Next, I'm going to create a text. So I'm going to right click new text and I'm going to call it 3D text. And I'm just going to select my layer, press P and I'm just going to move the position so that it's in the middle of the screen here. That's fine. I'm going to hide this layer again so you don't see the text layer. Then I'm going to right click new select solid. Solid settings are fine, so I'm going to click OK. And with the black solid highlighted, I'm going to click on Effect, scroll down to Video Copilot, and select Element. Once that's done in the Effects Control Panel, the Element plugin will show up. Next, you need to click on Render Settings, then click on Physical Environment, then on Override Layer, click on the drop down menu right next to it and select the, the freeze frame layer that we created earlier, which in my case is environment. Then under custom layers, I'm going to select the drop down menu next to custom layer. Then under texture maps, layer one, I'm going to select environment again, which was our freeze framed layer. Under custom text and masks, my path layer one, I'm going to select my 3D text. So once you've done those steps, click on scene setup. As you can see, element 3D has popped up. Click on extrude and we now have our 3D text. I'm just going to move this up a bit. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude this text out. It's a bit thin for me. So I'm going to come over to bevel scale and I'm going to increase the bevel scale. That's fine. I'll leave that about there. That's fine. Now I'm just going to apply a texture. So I'm going to click on presets, materials. I purchased the pack Pro Shaders 2, which is just a bunch of materials that you can add to your 3D object. So I'm going to add, I'm going to go on the metal. I'm going to go with metal burned. Brilliant. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select OK. 
And you can see now that we have our 3D text, but it's not positioned where we want it. So the next thing we need to do is come over to our tracked null. So in this case, I want my text to stick to this tracked null. So I'm going to select this tracked null. I'm going to press P for position. And then I'm going to select my element 3D layer. Actually, let me name this element 3D layer. And then under group one, we have particle replicator. So I'm going to select that and under position X and Y and Z, I'm going to copy the position from this track null into the position X, Y and Z here. So I'm going to select, copy, paste, copy, paste, and with the Z, copy, paste. Now, as you can see, the scale is a bit too big for my liking. So I'm going to decrease the size. And how we do that is we come over to particle look and I'm going to decrease the particle size, which will decrease the size of the text. That's absolutely fine by me. And I'm just going to move the text to the left a tiny bit. Now, let me just play it forward to see if the track is OK. Yep, yeah, that track looks fine to me. Now you can finish here, but I want to make sure the text looks like it's actually sitting on the floor. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go over to scene setup and in my model browser, I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to select models and I'm going to go down to primitives and select plane. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this plane out this folder. I'm going to click on this button here and select two. So we are in group two. What I'm going to do with this plane is I'm going to increase the scale by coming over to transform and scale. I'm just going to increase it a bit. The reason why I'm increasing it is because we will be able to see the actual shadow under reflecting off the 3D text. So once that's done, I'm going to click OK. So we cannot see the plane right now. So we're going to have to do the exact same process we've done with the 3D text. So I'm going to select my track null, press P to open up the position and then my element 3D layer. Now we set the plane to group two. So I'm going to select group two, come over to particle replicator and again, copy the X, paste the X to the X axis, copy the Y, paste the Y to the Y axis, copy the Z, paste the Z to the Z axis. And now we have the plane in the position that we want it to be. Now what we need to do is we need to come back into Element 3D again. So I'm going to select Scene Setup. And with the plane selected in the scene, I'm going to click this button here. So it reveals the material. I'm going to select Material. I'm going to scroll right down. And in Advanced, I'm going to select Matte Shadow. I'm going to select OK. As you can see, the plane has disappeared, but that's fine. Got to do one more step in order to create a shadow underneath the 3D text. So I'm going to come over to my render settings and select ambient occlusion and select enable AO. Once you've done that, you'll see a shadow being cast. I'm just going to increase the, the intensity of the shadow like so. So now we have this text in our scene that looks like it's sitting on the ground. That's the end of the tutorial. My name is Jermaine Grant. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Take care. Goodbye.